I wasn't really planning on recording anything uh, soon, but this just came up and it was kind of shocking to me. I'd heard this been talked about a little bit, but the fact that it actually like got announced this morning was a little bit, uh, shook me a little bit. So um, I wanted to go ahead and talk about it a little bit. I heard that some of you guys like some of these just more casual discussion videos where I sit down and give my thoughts on something. And since this is new news that some of you might not know, I thought I would share it with you. Um, so Kentucky Kingdom was a privately owned theme park in Louisville, Kentucky. And since a lot of people on this channel are probably not big uh, coaster and amusement park enthusiasts like I am and may not know anything about this place, uh, you may think of Six Flags Kentucky Kingdom. Uh, Kentucky Kingdom was an original park that was bought by Six Flags until Six Flags closed it. But then it got bought by the original owners again and they reopened it in 2014. And now it's fallen under new management once again, but not a huge chain this time. It's been uh, taken over by Hershen Family Entertainment. And I, I wanted, I, I, I say take over as in Hershen is taking over as the operators because I'm not a very like business minded person. A lot of people have said Hershen bought Kentucky Kingdom. But when I read through their um, press release that Hershen actually did, they never actually say that they purchased Kentucky Kingdom. They said that they are now the majority shareholders and therefore owners and operators of Kentucky Kingdom. I think there might be a difference there because you hear all the time about like company A bought company B for $25 million, you know, but this doesn't actually say anything like that. It just says they're now a majority shareholder. It's not really like this came out of the blue though. We know that uh, Hirsch and staff were visiting Kentucky Kingdom several times over the past few months and that Kentucky Kingdom was not doing very hot economically the last few years and COVID definitely did not help. Um, so we knew that uh, they were probably looking to uh, sell the park off to another operator at some point soon. And we knew that Hirsch was uh, potentially interested. So it's not like this is earth shattering news, um, but it has officially happened to now. But those of you who don't know Hershen, uh, they currently operate three amusement park resorts, uh, Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri, uh, Wild Adventures in Valdosta, Georgia, and uh, their flagship park, or what seems to now be their flagship park based on their current investment patterns, Dollywood. Now Dollywood is my favorite amusement park that I have ever been to. So of course, I think it's pretty awesome that they're, those owners are taking over Kentucky Kingdom now. I have not ever visited Kentucky Kingdom. I was planning to go last year, but those plans unfortunately got scrapped due to COVID. I just didn't really want to go anywhere while COVID was going on last year. Uh, this year I'm kind of fed up and I think eh, as long as they're following at least some decent safety guidelines, I'll probably visit some parks this year and Kentucky Kingdom will definitely be on that list this year. So hopefully I'll get to see it for the first time under Hershey management. And therefore, since I haven't actually been there, I'm not going to be able to splice in any like Kentucky Kingdom footage here because I don't, I don't have any. Now I also wanted to point out that Hershey is very interested in investing in this property, not just operating it. They talked about how Kentucky has great potential in the tourism industry and how it's very close to Nashville and Indianapolis, which are two uh, metro centers that don't have a local amusement park. They, they talk all about this in their press release about how important uh, uh, Kentucky Kingdom is and how much potential there is for growth in the uh, tourism industry around the spot. So they made it very clear that they are looking to invest in this park, not just leave it be. Like some people were worried uh, on the initial speculation that it would end up being a wild adventure situation where most people don't even know that that park is owned by Hershen because Hershen invests a ton in Dollywood and Silver Dollar City and wild adventures it just kind of sits there. Now, what's interesting is that Cheetah at Wild Adventures, actually, their wooden coaster got shut down this year, and there's rumors it might get RMC'd or something like that. I mean, that'd be kind of crazy. I would love to see Hershen start investing a bit more on Wild Adventures because I've looked up a bit about it online. It seems like a park that has a lot of potential, and it's very different than Hershen's other two parks. Uh, Dollywood and Silver Dollar City are very similar, which is good and bad. Wild Adventures is a kind of a different style of park, so that's drawing a different market. The other interesting thing about Kentucky Kingdom is that they've stated in the press release several times that they're hoping to rework uh, basically, what I said is they're hoping to rework a lot of the theming in the park to make it consistent with Hershen's other parks, which is interesting. Hershen tends to go for local area theming, at least with Dollywood and Silver Dollar City. Dollywood's very Smoky Mountains culture heavy, and Silver Dollar City is very kind of uh, also mountains cultural heavy, but another side of the mountains. 
different range of mountains. So it'll be interesting to see what Hershen comes up with um, in terms of making Kentucky Kingdom feel like a, you know, Kentucky uh, bluegrass, you know, that kind of vibe. Right now, Kentucky Kingdom is a lot of neon colors with no theming whatsoever on the rides. <laughs> To reach the point that Hershen is talking about in their press release with a theming and overall atmosphere of the park would take a very long time, be very expensive, a lot of resources, and there's absolutely no way in heck that they would be uh, done with that kind of conversion by the like May 15th or whatever uh, day it is that Kentucky Kingdom's opening for the season. So I'm thinking that Kentucky Kingdom probably remains the same this season, and Hershen will start gradually phasing in uh, the new atmospheric kind of stuff over time. Overall, I'm really excited, though, because what makes Dollywood my favorite park is the atmosphere, and Silver Dollar City looks just as impressive. Hershen just does such a great job uh, with building culture and atmosphere in their parks, and I have no doubt that they'll do a great job with Kentucky Kingdom in the long run. It'll just probably take several, several, several years uh, for us to get to the point that uh, Kentucky Kingdom is to Kentucky culture what uh, Dollywood and Silver Dollar City are to Tennessee and Missouri culture, respectively. I'm also interested to see what they'll do in terms of uh, new rides and stuff. I know Kentucky Kingdom is very constrained for space, and they already have some pretty impressive uh, and world-renowned rides in Storm Chaser and Lightning Run and a good family coaster recently in Kentucky Flyer. So I'm thinking they'll probably take a break on the rides for a while and focus on uh, food and shows two other things that Hershen is pretty well known for. They'll probably want to get Kentucky Kingdom up to speed on those two things first since they already have a decent ride collection. Is at least my prediction. We never really know. The amusement industry is one of those things where anything could happen. There are also talks in the press release about making Kentucky Kingdom into an international uh, destination, uh, which is a similar project to what they started with Dollywood. Um, a maybe five or ten years ago. In fact, I think they used pretty much the same uh, wording as they did when they started that project with Dollywood. And what happened with Dollywood is that I think will happen with Kentucky Kingdom if they're really pursuing this international destination like they are, is that Kentucky Kingdom is probably going to get a hotel at some point. I'm thinking that comes quite a few years down the line once they've done a lot with uh, shows and food and, and the stuff that Kentucky Kingdom really needs some help on. Again, I know space constraints is weird. Uh, they may have to buy some property down the street or something because I don't know how they would have one directly adjacent to the park, but it, Dollywood's hotel is not directly adjacent to the park. It's a bit down the road. You have to take a bus, which I always thought was weird since Dollywood has a lot of empty land right around the park. It would have been very easy for them to have an on-site resort. They just chose not to for whatever reason. It's, it's still technically on site. It's just a little down the street on site. It, it's more Disney style on site than uh, Cedar Point style, like right there in the park on site. That's all. Again, I've never actually been to Kentucky Kingdom. I just know what I know from online research. So I can't really speak to much else of what I think will be improved at the park and what I'm excited about or uh, really any of my opinions for that matter. I am slightly disappointed because I do think there is a place in the world for the kind of colorful, wild, wacky, no consistent theming, a classic amusement park style thing that Kentucky Kingdom's got going on. And usually when you see that type of thing, it comes with very old uh, rundown, not kept up very well. Kentucky Kingdom is one of the only places I can think of that kind of has that colorful, wild, classic amusement park aesthetic while still being very modern and well upkept from what I can see online and, and clean and such. So it'll kind of stink to lose that. But again, I don't think we'll lose that for another few years. I think if we go this year and probably next year, it's going to pretty much look the same. It'll be a few years before things start changing. And I'm very excited for the potential of where they could go uh, with Kentucky culture integrating that into the park. Oh, and the food. Half the time I'm at an amusement park, I literally cannot figure out where to eat. Dollywood's like the only time I go to an amusement park and I'm like excited about eating, you know? Oh, and Holiday World. Holiday World had really good, well, I wouldn't say really good. Holiday World had pretty good food. It, it wasn't Dollywood good food, but it was like good food enough where I was still decently excited to eat. Uh, whereas most of the other parks I go to, I, I 
spend way too long to get lunch because I can't figure out where to get lunch because they, they all just, all the restaurants just suck. I apologize for this kind of uh, informal and poorly edited video. It's kind of on a time constraint tonight. I just wanted to, you know, get this video out there, get my thoughts, let you guys know what's going on in the amusement industry because I know a lot of you on this channel are not crazy nerd like I am and you don't look up this stuff. And so I'm just keeping, keeping you updated so you know what's going on. So be sure to let me know in the comments if you want to see some more of me talking about what could possibly happen to the Kentucky Kingdom in the future. Maybe I'll do a uh, better, more thought out, uh, better edited video in the future. Um, and again, you guys, uh, at least some of you guys seem to be liking these more informal sit down chit chat uh, videos. So I'll keep doing them because they're pretty easy for me to make and we can have some more consistent content more of the time. Other than that, I'll see you guys on the next one.